Hi guys, uh, I've got a um, quick video where we're going to look through just or just look at how to preserve the aspect ratio of textures on a 3JS mesh. If I just um, I'm coming out of this wireframe, you can see here I've got a 3JS mesh here and it works like the CSS background cover. Um, you can see our texture uh, is preserving the aspect ratio even though the plane is changing size and it's not um, aligned with the aspect ratio of the texture. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to learn how to do this just so I could have full control over the size of my meshes and not have distorted textures. You can see, you know, if we change the, um, uh, this is what I was working with before. As you can see here, the textures go, they don't preserve the aspect ratio, they go all distorted. So this is what we're doing. We're implementing this get UV function. Um, so we can say new UV here and it will just preserve the aspect ratio of our meshes. Okay, so I hope you enjoy guys. Um, it's quite mathematical here, you can see this function here. So there's a lot of kind of equations going on, but it's worth it in the end, I think, just to preserve the aspect ratio and have, yeah, some nice looking meshes. So yeah, here we go, thanks. Okay guys, so welcome to the project. So you can see what I've got here. Um, I've just uh, got basic, a basic WebGL uh, application open. And you can see my meshes here. So these are taking image textures, but you'll notice that they, when we um, resize the actual meshes, the uh, textures um, go distorted. Okay, so they don't preserve the um, aspect ratio, um, which I, you know, is is quite frustrating. If you just, you know, you you could set up your planes to be the same size as the images, but I'd rather have full control where we can just, you know, preserve the aspect ratio and keep our meshes or the planes the size that we want them to be. So just to give you a quick overview of the project so far, I'm just gonna talk you through how I've set this up. Um, so I'm using a Vite project here. So Vite is like a, a bundler, a code bundler. Um, just use, it's like Parcel or any other kind of Webpack bundler where you can, it basically just compiles your code as we're using FreeJS here. Um, it just basically allows you to import all your modules and then it, it compiles them into a, an output. So you can see here, I'm using Vite to compile all our code and then we have this Vite app hosted here. Okay, so in here, we've got an index.html file um, and we're using our own custom smooth scrolling here. Okay, so we've just got, a, this takes in an element, which in this case is our scrollable div, which you'll see here. And in this scrollable div, we have two sections um, containing two images. Now, just to go through the 3JS setup, you can see here, we've got, we're using um, shaders here, our own custom shaders to load these textures to our images. Um, and for the camera setup, I just wanna talk you through that. So when we, um, we basically load our canvas, we load a new 3JS scene, we um, implement a text loader, which is built into 3JS. This is used to load our textures, so our images onto our onto our mesh meshes, so you'll see, yeah, the actual images we had here, if we go to our public folder, see the first image is this circuit board here that we're using for our first mesh, and yet yeah, the second image is this other cool, cool techie uh, image. Okay, so we're using that text load to load these images. We're next targeting, we're getting each of our image containers, so the container here, and we're putting them into an array. Now we've set the containers, you'll see here, to have a width of 40%. So that's why we're getting that distortion applied when we um, change the width of our viewport. And that's what we want to adjust. Okay, and then we have a meshes array, array which we um, push all of our meshes to. We then set the dimensions. This will just keep track of our, um, our actual canvas dimensions. So the size is the width and the height will always be the size of the viewport. And then we can also calculate the aspect ratio using the sizes dot width divided by the sizes dot height. Then we set up our actual 3JS um, cameras and field of views. So for our camera, we're using a perspective camera here, which is built into 3JS. The perspective, or how, or the distance on the z-axis, we're setting this uh, camera position z uh, to equal this dot perspective. So just to give you the diagram here. The camera will be here. This will be our viewport. This red arrow here is the perspective, okay? So we're 1,000 away from the viewport. That's what we're basically saying. And then to work out the camera's field of view, and this is just to align our 3JS dimensions to our HTML dimensions. So 
you know we can get them perfectly aligned in terms of size we're basically saying here we're saying two times math dot a so the math the math module i'm using the a tangent function or the arc tangent and what this does um this takes in um this dot sizes dot height so the viewport height divided by two and the reason we're divided by two is you can see basically this angle here is split into two right angle triangles so this top triangle is half of the viewport height and this bottom angle is half of the viewport height so that's why we're dividing it by two here and then we're dividing it by this dot perspective which is here and because we know that this is a thousand and this is half of the viewport height this will allow us to use this a tan function to work out the angle um, for this field of view okay um, so that's what we're doing here we divide it by this perspective and then we times it by 180 as this is 180 degrees divided by math.pi okay so that will allow us to get the field of view and then we're basically just putting that in our free dot perspective camera so the field of view argument is this dot field of view that we set and this this the aspect ratio the aspect ratio of the screen the near and the far variables are just 0 0.1 and then 1000 Okay, and then the renderer, we're just doing, we do use the WebGL renderer. We're setting the canvas to this canvas, the alpha to true, so it's got a um, transparent background and anti alias of true just to preserve or just so we, you know, get the highest quality possible without any jagged edges. Um, we're adding event listeners as well, so when we resize our page, we're just resetting all of the widths and the heights and the aspect ratios, as well as our camera FOV settings and aspect ratio. This is basically just copied from above. And it's really important that we update the camera projection matrix to make sure it's all up to date. And then we're just setting, updating the renderer size as well to be the um, the size of the viewport. And we're setting the pixel ratio here to be either the window device pixel ratio or two, the minimum of those. We don't want it to go above that. Um, I know some of these monitors out there now are crazy, you know, going kind of up to four or five uh, device pixel ratios, which is too much really. We just want to keep it um, either two or one. Okay, so then we're duping through each of our mesh our containers and then we're just basically um, loading the, the source of the image. So we're using children zero to select the image tag and then we're targeting the source attribute. We're loading that into a new mesh item. Now, so what we've got here, it, let me just go to our shader material now. Um, so we've got a free shader material here um, and what we're doing, we're just giving it the, the following uniforms, okay? So we don't just don't need the time variable, we can take that out. That's not needed. Um, so we have the U texture, which is what we're passing through to our shaders, which is the image. Um, we have the U texture size, okay? Which is basically the value is a new free vector two, and it takes this dot image dot offset width. So that's the actual image. Um, so up here, image, that's the actual image width and then we're taking the image height this will basically allow us to get the aspect ratio of the source image okay so that's why we're using that and the plane resolution that is the actual uh, width of the container which is containing the image so that would be this dot source dot offset width and this dot source dot offset height so if I just show you actually if we go to our elements here uh, you can see we have the container um, yeah, so if I just, you know, do this, so dot offset width, you can see the offset width is 211. Uh, so that's what this is, just this, um, the plane, we, we're, our plane will be the same size as these containers, basically. That's what we're setting it to. And that's what the source is, that's the container. Okay, so now, can see obviously this is getting distorted so we want to change that so let's go to our shader material um our vertex shader we don't actually need to change anything here so i've just got very in vec2 i'm just passing that through the vec2 vuv um that's what we're setting and then we're setting the varying uvs to the actual uvs and then this is pretty much a standard gl position where we're using the projection matrix times the model view matrix times the vec4 position and then the um, alpha channel will just be 1.0 now, the work to, to basically make the aspect ratio work, um, we need to use to go into the actual fragment shader. Okay, so we're going to create a function above the main function here. 
what I've done here, <coughs> uh, we actually have, so at the top we have the un our uniforms. Um, so we have the uniform sampler 2D, the U text that we pass through, and then we have the uniform U plane resolution. Remember these are all passed through here, U plane resolution and the texture size. So then what we can do is we can create a function up here, we'll say vec2. Um, get UV and this is going to take in um, the actual initial UV and then it's also going to take in our texture size so vec2 texture size and uh, vec2 plane size okay and then what we want to do now is once say vec2 wants to create a temp UV. Okay, so we say vec2 temp UV equals UV um, minus vec2 uh, 0.5. Okay, um, and then we just need to return, yeah, need to return. Um, so return temp UV. Okay, and then what I want to do now is if we come into um, uh, our function down here, our main function, um, I'm just going to say um, vec2 uh, new UV equals, and we can use this function, the get UV function, we want to pass in our varying uh, a VUV, so our var VUV um, here, the varying vec2 VUV, and then we want to pass in our U texture size, and then our U plane resolution. Okay, that should be vec2. Okay, so now if we set this to new UV, okay, so that's what's um that's the kind of distortion we're getting now as we're adding zero point or subtracting minus zero point five. So now to make sure this is centered our texture, what I want to do is we're just going to say um, temp UV um, plus equals zero point five. Okay, and then that's nice and centered now. So let's just try to distort this a bit just so you can see how this works. Um, okay. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to figure out something here. Okay, yeah, so if we, if we, yeah, add the minus vec 2.5, and then we add that at the end, that will center our image. Okay, and then what we want to do here is to, so we want to say, we want to get first, get the plane aspect ratio. So we can say this will be a float. We'll say plane aspect is going to equal U plane resolution dot X divided by U plane resolution dot Y. And then we want to do the same thing for our um, texture resolution. So we'll just say uh, U texture size. We'll say, yeah, texture aspect and that's just going to be um, 
the u texture size dot x and then new texture size dot y okay and now with this we can say if the plane aspect is less than the texture aspect then we want to say um, temp uv um, equals temp uv um, times vec2 and then we can say first argument wants to take the plane aspect divided by the texture aspect and then we'll set that to 1 um, second parameter and then else we'll say let's copy this down we want to revert if the plane aspect is greater than the texture aspect so here we can just say want the first argument to be 1 in this case and then here we'll just say texture aspect um, divided by plane aspect okay and now what you'll notice is that now preserves our aspect ratios for our images for our mesh items okay so that's the equation and then so just to show you if we just come back to here um, let's set the wireframe to true just to show this is yeah we get that so I think this really took me a while to figure out to um, to get this to be able to preserve the aspect ratio of the images for our free meshes okay so I'll share the codes to this in my github um, down below in the description but yeah I hope you found this useful um, yeah it really was a, I found it really was a pain to get this uh, work in for a while so glad I finally got, uh, got to the end so it works basically like background size cover in CSS okay so yeah thanks for watching guys cheers